Our former student is now at a new company, has been fully onboarded, has gone through all of their sales enablement um, training programs and onboarding programs, and here is what he discovered. And I'm going to say this almost verbatim. He said, Amar, they have tons of training on how to manage the sales cycle, but what they don't teach Hey folks, it's Jamie and Amar at the Get More at Bats podcast. Hope you're doing great, where we help account-based sellers like account execs, account managers, account directors, get more at bats. Pretty simple, right? Well, today I want to start sharing a story with you that just happened this morning, which we thought would be great because we're recording a podcast on it now. Now, we have a former uh, student that went through our program that teaches account-based sellers how to prospect in the new day and age. And it sounds weird to say, well, you're teaching someone how to prospect. Shouldn't everybody know how to prospect? And the answer is they don't. Here is the main thing that he or actually- Or have forgotten the skill. That's the Or they've forgotten the skill, Jamie. Yeah, well said. So I'm just gonna share the story quite transparently with you. So our former student is now at a new company, has been fully onboarded, has gone through all of their sales enablement um, training programs and onboarding programs. And here is what he discovered. And I'm going to say this almost verbatim. He said, Amar, they have tons of training on how to manage the sales cycle, but what they don't teach and what they don't even discuss is how to get to the sales cycle, how to arrive at the sales cycle. And this is exactly what Jamie and I have been talking about for ages that salespeople, account-based sellers are stuck. They know what to do. The average account executive that we're training now is about the age of 32 up to 45 in that age bracket, meaning they have about a decade or plus of experience. They know what to do with the prospect once you get them the meeting, but they're so out of, um, not out of touch, but they're out of shape with prospecting. They've had SDRs and BDRs and marketing basically do all their prospecting for them, but they have no idea how to do it themselves. So the biggest thing that we should discuss in this podcast, Jamie, is what is the importance of self-generating pipeline? I'm going to pass the ball to you, but I want to just remind everybody listening of this. Jamie and I ran one of the largest studies in the world for account-based sellers, and here's what we've discovered. Account-based sellers are telling us, this is not us, this is them telling us that 70% of their pipeline has to be self-generated. 70% of their number has to be self-generated. That despite marketing support, BDR support, SDRs going overdrive on inbound, et cetera, they are still vastly responsible for their own pipeline. Jamie, over to you. What do you have to say on this? I'm going to give you an analogy. So when I was a kid, I played hockey. Now for our American listeners, hockey is not as, a, as popular. Let's use, again, soccer or let's use basketball. But there are coaches that will spend a lot of time in the offensive zone and you're practicing you know, blocking the goalie and firing pucks at the goalie and getting as many shots on goal. But I distinctly remember we had a coach. This is kind of like my middle of my hockey career. Like think of it like ages 12 through 16, the most influential kind of growth years. We had a coach that spent, it seemed like every practice, we actually worked on breakouts now, breaking out, that means so you're behind your goalie. So the, the puck gets fired into your end. Your team has to spill defensively into your end. The defenseman typically picks up the puck behind the goalie, pauses, assesses everything in front of them. The wingers get set up on the boards, and you start this kind of dance routine. If you've ever watched hockey, what you'll notice is the centerman will curl in front of the goalie. And the defenseman will curl out, passing the puck to the winger. The winger catches the curling centerman moving to the middle of the ice, passes it to him. 
that person then breaks from your defensive end into the offense. Now, this happens in basketball, right? Somebody scores on you. You collect the ball underneath your own basket. You have to break out. Same with soccer. The goal here is, unfortunately, it's the most boring, the most tedious, uh, the part that people don't want to practice. But if you don't break out of your own end, none of it actually matters. So and well in fact, in the mid-1990s, a team, the New Jersey Devils, actually studied this. Okay, So there was a concept called the trap was invented in the 1990s by the New Jersey Devils. And what they realized is, oh, my God, all that matters is if we actually jam up the center of the ice from blue line to blue line, you jam up the center of the ice and Make sure that teams struggle their breakout process. We don't have to practice defending our own zone and like blocking shots for our goalie and all that stuff because the teams will actually never get into our zone. So if we practice our version of a breakout over and over again, and we use this trap concept to ensure that they never really get good at breaking out of their own end, and this, the New Jersey Devils in the 1990s won a couple Stanley Cups, and they would win games like one nothing, and 2-1, to one, like the most boring games ever. But they understood that if you don't get going, nothing else matters. And so this is the same concept in sales. Like as an account executive, I just had this conversation with a customer who wanted to work on negotiating skills. And they want to work on qualification criteria. So do we go to medic or bant and all these sort of things? Well, then, okay, now describe for me the percentage of whether they're existing uh, accounts. So imagine this is an account manager working a portfolio of existing customers, or this is net new. Describe for me the number of opportunities that they're creating net new every week, every month, every quarter. Describe for me what percentage of sales quota that is making versus what they're receiving and what's the delta between it. And what that customer comes to realize is like, yeah, it is really important. You do need to, to master negotiating skills. You do need to master qualification criteria. You do need to have incredible demo experiences. You do need to know how to work with procurement and negotiating proposals. But, and I will use another sport analogy. Everyone wants to walk onto the driving range and pound balls 300 yards down, down the fairway. But in golf, 11% of golfing is the drive. More than 50% of golfing is 50 yards and inward of chipping and putting. Nobody ever wants to sit at, and, and putt all day long. They want to smash balls at the driving range, but it only makes up 11%. In a sales process, Getting from zero to one is the putting process. It's 50% of the whole thing. Once you open the door, there's only a percentage of those deals that are actually going to, uh, you're going to have a great demo experience. They're going to be sales qualified because you have a qualifying criteria or discovery process. And then there's that few times you need to use your negotiating skills to work with procurement, to give a proposal and win that deal. That is such a small portion of the time spent in comparison to what the load is of finding an opportunity, unearthing that opportunity, and creating that actual opportunity. And far too much horsepower is spent on the driving range portion and not on the putting portion. Or back to my hockey analogy, everybody wants to run PowerPoint plays or a power plays and spend all their time on the offensive zone tactics when really breaking out of your own zone is the vast majority of the game. And if you can't break out of your own zone, none of the rest of the game matters. So anyways, that's it's, how I would have teams. Think about it. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you look, I mean, Jamie and I are qualified to say this because we've been in sales for 20 plus years each, but so much effort is put on the one to the 100 journey meaning meeting one to close, but hardly any effort is put on the zero to one journey. And the zero to one journey actually is what kicks off the one to 100 journey. 
There are deals in pipeline right now that your reps have, if you're a leader listening to this, that your reps have that you know are not accurate. Why are they holding on to them? Because they don't know how to prospect to open more doors, more regularly, more consistently. So that's the message of the podcast, folks. We're going to keep it short today. As we wrap up, just remember, going zero to one is what's going to be required now more than ever. And the reason for that is because the economy is topsy-turvy. Investments are still a little bit paused. We're still in an era of mass layoffs, unfortunately. We're really sad to hear that news. So every single account exec, every single account manager really needs to pull up their sleeves and figure out how are you going to consistently prospect and open doors. If you don't have that figured out, reach out to us. We're Jamie and Amar. You can find us on LinkedIn. We'll be more than happy to spend time with you personally to coach you and guide you. And we do this because we love the sales community. We wouldn't be in sales for 20 years if we didn't. So that's it. Reach out to us on LinkedIn. Remember to like and share this podcast. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks so much. We'll see you all soon. Cheers. Thanks a lot.